Hello, would you like a Olivia Rodrigo face paint mask? Hey friends, as I'm sure you can tell, I have a really exciting tutorial for you today that will get you some really awesome end results. So grab your iPad and your Apple Pencil and let's get started. Today we are diving a bit into the AR world by creating face masks on our iPad. If you have watched Olivia Rodrigo's brutal music video, then this might look familiar. The cute face masks and graphics that were appearing on their faces in that music video was actually created using Procreate on the iPad. So I'm gonna show you how you can get that same effect on your iPad and we'll also take it a step further and move those over into Spark AR so we can create our own Instagram filters to use as well. An important thing to note here is Face Paint and Procreate is only available on iPads that have the A12 Bionic chip or higher and that is due to what the system requires to basically put your artwork on your very 3D face. So let's just open up Procreate here on my iPad. I am using the iPad Pro fifth generation, the 2021 model that has the M1 chip, but you can easily do this on any iPad that has the A12 Bionic chip. You can use it on the new iPad Air 4, the new iPad mini even. I'm just going to use my iPad Pro here. So I have Procreate open here, and what I'm going to do is actually start off with a square canvas. So I'm just going to hit the plus icon here in the right hand corner and I'm just going to go with the square option that's already available in the Procreate Canvas library. Alright, so now that I have my square here, they actually have face paint kind of hidden in the settings. So I'm going to hit this gear shift icon here and then go down to reference, making sure that I'm under canvas under these actions. If I toggle on reference, you'll see an option for canvas, image, or face. Select the option face here, and this is going to turn your camera on so you can use your face as an actual reference tool. If I come over here into options, we can actually take a photo, we can record a video. Here we can actually turn the camera off and we can actually make this camera go full screen if we needed to. So we can actually turn the camera off here. It'll still have our face reference, but our camera will just be off. You can see here in this window now, we have these markers and obviously these two here at the top are markers indicating where our eyes will be located. The marker here in the center is our nose and then bottom right here is kind of our lips or our mouth. So if I just turn on the camera so we can see my face here. So this is what it looks like in Procreate as we're working. So let's say I just drag and drop a white color here. We have a very um, disturbing looking mask, but just to show you kind of what it looks like when you start painting on yourself or color dropping <laughs> into the canvas. And let's use another color here just so you can see how this works. We'll select a fun brush and if I color where my eyes are, you can see it's kind of putting that over the face mask. Here's the other eye. Here's where the nose is. So it's kind of getting my nostrils here. And then here we have the mouth or the lips. So um, this is kind of a very disturbing looking face mask, but that's kind of the general flow, the general setup for getting started with face paint in Procreate. This is a really cool feature and used in Olivia Rodrigo's brutal music video. So I thought it would be fun to walk you through how to create different face masks or filters using face paint and Procreate. I wanted to be inspired by one of the brutal masks that were shown in Olivia Rodrigo's music video. So there are a lot of iconic brutal masks in this video, but I wanted to recreate this one. I thought it was interesting. I thought it'd be simple to do. So this is the one that I'm going to kind of walk you through in this tutorial. Okay, so to get started, I am going to turn my reference back on and I have my camera on. I like to have the camera on for part of the time and then once I get a feel for how things are being placed on my face, then I'll usually kind of lay my iPad down, turn off the camera and then finish illustrating that way. And I found that that really works well for me. So I'm just going to start off with the monoline brush that's already available in the Procreate library. It's under calligraphy, under monoline. 
you can actually come in here to the brush settings, go to properties and increase or decrease the max or minimum size for this brush. I'm just going to turn it up just a little bit. Okay, so for this face mask, she kind of has this yellowish to dark pink kind of gradient. So I think what I'm gonna start off with is kind of the mid-tone of that color, just the middle color, middle pink. Okay, so this is the pink that I'm gonna start off with. Here is my hex code for that color. So for this mask, she has kind of these drips kind of coming down from underneath her eyes. So I'm gonna to try to mimic that as well. So I'm gonna have my camera on for this and just kind of hold it up so I can see and then just kind of trace along underneath this marker indicating my eye just so I can see where it begins and stops as far as like actually reaching my eye if that makes sense. And also to make this easier on myself what I'm actually going to do is come over here to my wrench icon, turn on drawing guide, hit edit drawing guide, and then turn on symmetry. So whatever I do on one side of the canvas it'll automatically kind of populate, do this little symmetry magic that Procreate has enabled us to do and put that on the other side of the canvas. If for whatever reason you wanted to kind of have a quad or kind of a radial thing, you can come over here to options under symmetry and actually change it. So we have vertical, we have horizontal here, here's the quadrant and the radial, and then we, you can actually turn on rotational symmetry and all kinds of stuff. I'm just going to leave it as vertical because I do want the symmetry to kind of fall flat down the vertical axis of my face. I'm gonna select done here. And so now whatever I do on one side, it'll automatically do on the other side of my face. So I'm going to do that just to make it easier when I'm drawing this. All right, so now I have kind of a reference of like where my waterline starts for this. And then we have this longer drip kind of coming down almost to the same level as the mouth. Then we have some other kind of scribblies here, and then it meets back up at the top edge of the eye, top corner of the eye. So I'm just going to drag and drop this pink in. Okay, it looks like we have our drips in. The kind of corner of my eye here just looks a little bit odd, so I'm going to kind of erase those edges. Now that we have that in there, now I'm going to go through creating kind of this gradient effect almost for this specific mask in the music video. So now I'm going to come over here to my layers panel and select new layer. So you'll notice on layers that you have a symmetry turned on, you'll get this, this little assisted indicator on the layer. On the new layer, whatever we actually write, since it doesn't say assisted, doesn't automatically kind of populate on the other side of the face. So to turn that on, you're just going to tap the layer and hit drawing assist, and it'll automatically turn on symmetry for that layer as well. So now I'm going to create kind of the gradient for this mask. So it starts off as yellow, we get this kind of mid pink, and then it goes into the darker kind of hot pink. So I'm gonna start off with the kind of light yellow color. Okay, so this is the hexadecimal code that I'm going to go with for the yellow color of this mask. So it looks a little odd now, but I'm just trying to get the gradient down. So we're gonna go with that for our yellow, kind of looks very odd on our face. Now we're gonna go with our mid color. So we already have our mid pink, but I'm just going to pick that up again. And then I wanna go in with our hotter pink. And then I'm just going to kind of circle the rest of those edges for the drips. All right, so now that we have a very weird looking face paint, now we're going to actually create the gradient. So once you have kind of all your color where you want it kind of placed, what I'm going to do is actually come up here to my magic wand, go down to Gaussian blur and hit layer, and then just slide and you'll see it kind of fade out, kind of fuzz out those lines and those boundaries to get this gradient effect. I like the way that looks. I'm gonna come up here to my magic wand again, come down to noise and hit layer. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of noise. And now we have our gradient. Now what I'm going to do is actually just clip it to our bottom kind of drips for our face mask, just by tapping on layer two and then hitting clipping mask. So now we have this nice gradient effect on our kind of paint drips on our Olivia Rodrigo Brutal Mask. So now for this mask, she also has a kind of thick black outline. It looks like the outline isn't consistent all the way across the paint drips. So a good way to achieve that is to just outline our paint drips. So I'm just going to choose black here and I'm just going to outline our paint drips here. At this point, I could probably turn off my camera and then just lay my iPad down flat so it's easier since I already kind of have a majority of the filter created. And to move this little reference window, you can actually just click and drag it wherever you want. Okay, so I'm actually gonna go in with the script pin for the kind of black outline of the Brutal Mask. That way I can vary the black stroke with 
pressure because it doesn't look like it's consistent all across the face mask. So I want to get that same effect. So I'm just going to make it easy on myself and use the script pen. So it looks like it's pretty light here around the corner of the eyes and it gets darker. All right, so now that I have my black outline, I'm just gonna see what it looks like on my face by turning on the camera again to see if I like the way it's starting to look. I do have a stray mark here, so I'm actually going to get rid of that. So as you can see, I didn't turn on the assisted, which was kind of a big mistake here. If I turn on assisted now, it's not going to automatically populate on that side. So because I didn't do that, I'm just going to turn that off, hit duplicate, use my selection tool here, and I'm actually going to flip it. So I'll select flip horizontal and then just kind of overlay it since I forgot to click the assist for that layer. But that's just a really easy way to kind of go back if you forget to hit assist. Okay, so now she has kind of these like glowing stars and orbs surrounding this kind of like paint drop on her face. So we're going to mimic that as well. Now I'm just going to merge my two layers for kind of like the black outline just by pinching these. All right, so now I'm going to select a new layer and for her face mask, the stars and kind of glowing orbs aren't exactly symmetrical. So she has them in different places depending on the side of the face that they're on. So I kind of want to mimic that same effect. So I'm not going to turn assisted on, symmetry on for layer four in my kind of face masks here. So I'm going to come down here and select luminance because I kind of want to give that kind of light effect like we're getting with those stars and those kind of orbs. So we'll try out the light pen and see if I like that look. All right. Yep. I like that. Okay. So now that I have it on a new layer. I'm just going to start off by drawing a star and I'm going to come in with a black mono line and then draw a little sad face in it like her filter has. So now I'm just going to repeat that process with these stars. What I can do is actually just duplicate these and make them smaller and kind of place them in different areas on my face. I'm just going to turn the camera back on just so I can check in to see how it's looking on my actual face. All right, so now we have the stars in and one really cool thing about these face paints and face masks in Procreate is that you can actually animate them on your face as well. So I think that'd be really cool to try and animate the stars for this specific face mask tutorial in this video. So I'm actually just going to select all of these little layers by swiping on them and I'm going to select group. Now I have all of those in a group. I'm actually just going to duplicate that layer by sliding to the right and hitting duplicate. I'm going to turn off my first layer and then I'm just going to kind of reposition the stars. So just kind of move them just a tad bit, select a star, kind of move where it is, rotate it a little bit. And I'm just going to repeat that for all of these kind of glowing stars. Done. I'm just going to tap on that layer and flatten. I'm gonna turn that layer off and then turn on our original grouping and then flattening that layer as well. So if I click between these, it looks like the stars are moving. So if you like how it's looking, you can just go with this. Under options here, you can actually go in and take a photo or a video of your finished face mask. So now I have a photo with the Olivia Rodrigo Brutal Face Mask. Okay, so now that I have this in, I'm just going to duplicate my kind of orb layer, I guess, and then drag that down to my second star layer. And I'm just going to merge those and then merge my other orbs and my other stars. I'm also going to merge my clipping layer with my layer that's being clipped to because I'm satisfied with how that looks. So I'm just going to merge those two. And then I'm also going to merge my kind of black outline of that as well. I'm happy with everything and I'm not gonna change it. So now I'm gonna come over here to my wrench icon again and then turn on animation assist under the canvas settings. Hello, would you like a Olivia Rodrigo face paint mask? Because I want kind of my gradient part of the brutal mask to be stationary while the stars are animated, I'm going to select my frame down here in the animation assist. So it's, as you can see, it's created kind of an animation for our three layers. So I'm going to select the layer that has our gradient of the kind of like droopy tears or whatever. I'm gonna click that and hit background, toggle that on so that always remains on. 
And then we have our two layers for our stars. So what I'm going to do actually is just add more frames for the stars and then add more frames for the second version of the stars. And then I'm just going to put them in a pattern. So first layer of stars, second layer of stars, first layer of stars again, second layer of stars. It kind of go back and forth. All right, so now in my settings, I'm going to make sure that loop is on because I just want the animation to loop itself. And here we can adjust the frames per second as well as the onion skinning and the opacity as it transitions between the two layers for the animation. All right, so we can just hit play to see what this looks like. And then we have our animated brutal mask. I'm going to turn on my camera so I can see what it looks like on my face. And then since we have our animated face mask, we can actually go into options and then take a video. So let's record a video for our Olivia Rodrigo brutal mask. And that's the overall process for using face paint in Procreate on the iPad to create really cool face paints and masks like the ones shown in Olivia Rodrigo's brutal music video. And you can take these a step further and pull these into Spark AR to create your own Instagram filters, which I'll also be walking you through. So because Spark AR is an entirely different program, we do have to use that on our computer. This isn't something that you can use on your iPad. And for that reason, I'm just gonna make it super simple and create a static Instagram filter. So I'm actually just going to turn off all of the layers of our stars except one of them. And then I'm also going to turn off animation assist for this layer and turn off my reference window. All right, so now that I have my square, it's easiest to create filters in Spark AR using Procreate if the filter on the square is centered. So what I'm going to do is just swipe right on these two layers to make sure they're centered, select my selection tool, and then I'm just going to kind of move my filter around until I see these guidelines pop up. So once I get kind of the crosshairs, I know that my filter is centered on the canvas. And that's gonna make it really easy pulling it into Spark AR so it can populate onto our face when we're creating these filters. So now what I'm going to do is come up here to the wrench icon, click share, and I'm going to share that as a PNG. It's very important to share it as a PNG so the background, our canvas is transparent. If we export it as any other file type, one, we might not be able to pull it into Spark AR to create our Instagram filter, and two, it might add a white background, and if it does and we pull in our filter, we'll have our filter on top of a white square on top of our face, and that's just not a cute filter. So make sure that you export it as a PNG, and this is where I can save it anywhere. I can email it to myself. What I'm going to do is just airdrop it to my MacBook since I do have the Apple ecosystem. So I'm just gonna airdrop that to my MacBook and we're gonna pull up Spark AR on our computers. Spark AR is a free program that you can download on your MacBook or your PC. All right, so now we're going to walk through the steps of Spark AR on the computer. So this is what the program looks like when you first open it. And there are a lot of tutorials within the program, a lot of great content in the program for learning how to use Spark A and create very elaborate Instagram filters. However, we're just gonna keep it real simple. They do have templates that you can work off of like face masks, makeup, different backgrounds, different head and neck decorations. We're just gonna start off with a new project. So I'm gonna select new project. I'm going to select face tracking because we want the effect to move as the person's face is moving. Over here on the left-hand side, we have an icon that looks like a little video camera. If we click this, we can actually change the model that our filter is being placed on. And this is a great way for us to test our filter on different skin tones, different hair types and hair colors. So we can click through our models here and you can even select your own webcam to see what the filter will look like on your own face. Over here on the kind of filter window or model window, you can actually change the device that your filter is on. For this, I normally just like going with iPad just so I can see what the filter looks like on kind of a larger view within this window. But the filter will look virtually the same across any of the devices that you use on if the filter is placed correctly on the face. All right, so we already have our face tracker all set up. What I'm going to do is actually right click. You can also select add object here and we are going to select face mesh and we're going to get this really weird looking kind of checkered face. Now I'm going to import our face mask that we created in Procreate. So our brutal mask, I'm going to select import from computer here down in the assets and just navigate to where my filter is. And we're going to hit open. 
So now we need to create a material for our face mask to be placed on. So right now we have the mesh of our face to make sure it's kind of finding the features of our face really well. We're going to select face mesh zero in our Spark AR. And over here on the right hand side, you'll see something called materials. So we'll hit that plus icon. Now we have this kind of really weird like material of ours. We can actually come in here and rename that if we wanted to. So we could call this brutal mask material if we wanted to. And then here is the actual brutal mask that we have. All right, so what I'm going to do for shader type, I'm gonna come in here and select face paint. Here under texture, we're gonna hit choose file and then select our brutal mask and hit open. And now we have our brutal mask kind of placed here on our face. Here we can increase the brightness or the opacity of it. So here we can decrease the opacity or increase. And now we have kind of our brutal face mask kind of populated here on our face. It looks really cool. All right, so now that we have our face mask created to test it out on places like Instagram or Facebook, what you can do is actually select test on device here in the bottom left hand corner. Here you can have it sent to your Facebook or to your Instagram. So I'm gonna have it sent to my Instagram just to show you how that works. And because Spark AR is connected with your Facebook, it'll automatically be connected to your Instagram and it'll just send you kind of a notification in the app to check. So here we have Preview AR Exports by K Digital Studio. And if I just click this, it'll have me agree to some terms of testing out this filter. I can click continue and then it'll already be kind of up here on my face. And then I can take pictures, I can do videos of my kind of brutal face mask. Another way that you can test out your Instagram filter is by actually plugging in your phone and downloading the Spark AR app. So here I have a cable. I'm just going to plug in my phone into my computer here, search Spark AR player on my phone, and then I'm going to select preview in Spark AR player, send a person's iPhone. I'm going to send that to my iPhone and then it'll automatically pop up on my phone for me to be able to test out the filter. So this is a great way to test out the filter if you just kind of want to look and see make some adjustments, send again, have it sent to the app. It works really well versus having to open up Instagram every time and waiting for that to send via Instagram. So this is just one of three ways that you can test out the filter. So now if you have a filter that you love for Instagram and you wanna use it as a filter on the platform, all you'll do is come up here to click publish. It'll open up into its own web page where you can name the filter, add some tags to describe the filter, as well as create kind of a demo video of you using the filter. And that's essentially how you create Instagram filters on Spark AR using artwork that you've created in Procreate. And now we have super really cool filters out of an easy tutorial using face paint in Procreate on the iPad. Even if filters really aren't your thing, I did wanna show you this tutorial using Procreate because I think the face paint feature is kind of an untapped potential, just kind of hiding in the settings in Procreate. And with Halloween coming up, I thought it would just be really fun, especially if you're not able to connect with your friends and family for a more normal Halloween. I do have the filters that I created in this video in addition to some other filters that I've created over on my Instagram, if you search K Digital Studio in the effects gallery on either Instagram or Facebook, you'll be able to pull these up and use them for your selfies. If you do take a selfie with one of my filters, be sure to tag me at K Digital Studio so I can share. And I'd also love for you to tag me in anything that you create using face paint and Procreate. I'd love to see if you recreate any of the brutal masks in Olivia Rodrigo's video or your own for Halloween. And of course, just root you on. Let me know if you're interested in seeing more unique tutorials like this on the iPad. But until then, I will see you next week with another video. Bye.